Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have a Citroen Dispatch here, or a Peugeot Expert. Same van, a uh, Toyota Pro Ace, I think, as well. So I've just got my uh, booster pack on there just to keep the voltage steady because uh, we're just doing some diagnostics. Okay, you can see there, when you put the ignition on, we've got AdBlue and Service message on. He said he's had it at a couple of garages and they can't see a fault. So, start it up. There you go, we got that message on and then you get over here, uh, starting impossible in 100 miles. So he's just about made it to me. Using the launch Euro Tab 3, we read the fault codes. What have we got? Absolutely nothing to work on. Zero codes. That is strange. You've got the fault there, but it's not giving you any sort of information. Let's go to data stream. Uh, we'll look at the exhaust. No, sorry, we're going to look at the Dinox. Where is it? Where is the Dinox? Over here, Dinox system one. Pressure of the urea fluid. Uh, let's just select all of them for a minute. So the Dinox system is waiting to bleed up, so we need to wait for that to get to temperature pressure of the urea fluid. Now, I've been doing DPS for 10 years, um, but this sort of Dinox system, AdBlue system, I do know about them, but um, I'm still sort of, still learning about this, you know, there is still a lot of stuff I'm learning about AdBlue systems. Um, now, I do remember doing diagnostics on one of these before, um, and I looked at the pressure on the of the urea fluid from the AdBlue tank, four bar. Now, I did get confused with that on one of my one of my videos before because I said, look, it's got four bar pressure. I can't see an issue. Um, now, that is an issue because apparently four bar on these Peugeot Citroëns is, is basically means zero. Four bar, it can't read anything below four bar. So just four bar is as low as it goes. Even if you, if you disconnect the tank, it doesn't go lower than four bar. Where it needs to go is over five and a half bar. Um, or basically above five bar, five to six bar, and then you know the uh, the tank is working, the blue tank is working. Um, now I did get that wrong before, so hopefully anybody else who's watching this will understand that as well. Um, so what we're going to do is going to hold some revs on the on the van, just get the temperature up, and once that starts pressurizing, we should see the, the reading there of four. We should see that go above above where it is so we'll, hold, we'll pause the video now while we're accelerating and waiting for the um, for the pump to switch on okay now you can see the pressurization phase has started and we are up to 5.8 round 6 bar so that's good news for the customer his uh, ad blue tank is working now they are expensive so I'll, I'm sure he'll be glad he doesn't have to replace that so we're back out of there, we'll have a look at the Dinox information too. Select all. So injection is authorised. That's a good sign. That's working. Coolant temperature was getting up to 90 degrees there, which is fine. 200 ppm, which is high for the Nox. pressure in the exhaust, we change it over to HPA there, 1030. Now we're just going to click on those two items there and have a look at them. So zero quantity is injected, thermal agent of the catalyst is at 400 and now we've, we've got high NOx readings so basically that's why it's triggering off this. What I'm going to suggest doing here on this is I'm going to make up a mixture of warm water and the cleaning fluid. We're going to put that through the catalyst system, try and clean off all of the, the white crystallization that would be inside. So basically if your catalyst is, is coated in a white crystallization, it's not going to be working as efficiently as it should do. And then uh, we'll reset the Dinox system and hopefully 
everything should be okay because his tank is working and we'll make sure that the AdBlue injector is unblocked then it all should be fine okay so we've got the vehicle raised up here so just here we have nice easy access to the AdBlue injector on this now if you take notice here there's an eye leak which is not what I'm here for but I'll advise the customer about that so this is a size 4 hex we're just opening off the clamp for the AdBlue injector there Okay, we're going to clean out the ad blue injector. It's not completely blocked, but there's a buildup of soot there. We'll clean around the port where it goes, and we'll get this reattached. Then we can uh, start up the top soon. So the first part is just using this little pick here just to clean out any of the soot. Okay, now we've got it all cleaned out. Just picked off all of the fluid and used some uh, intake cleaner just to spray off any of the loose dirt. So that's where the sort of leak looks like it's coming from. Someone's bodged up the injector leak off pipes. Uh, so it's all leaking around where the fuel filter housing is and the injectors. And obviously it's running down onto the gearbox. Okay, so I'm using a 14mm crossfoot spanner to try and open this sensor down here. Which is the exhaust gas temperature sensor. Right here. Now it's, it's not opening, so we've put some penetrating oil on there. Uh, it still doesn't want to open, so we're going to have to try and get some heat on it. Okay, we've got that connected up. We're using the Launch UK cleaning fluid, and we've got that mixed 50% with water. Now the fluid goes to here, and we fill it up with water mixture, and we're going to squirt that in. This goes directly down there, straight into the catalyst. I'm going to come back out of the data stream, go to special functions, service, replacement parts, work on the emissions, replacement of the pre catalyzer. We'll uh, switch off the ignition. And we'll wait. It'll just run down on a timer there. Switch the ignition back on. Successful. Now we'll do replacement of the NOx catalytic converter as well so same procedure ignition off and we wait again so the reason why we're doing that is if we do not reset those these faults will not go away because the van has now calculated that the catalyst needs replacing so basically the right way to do this job is replace the catalyst but of course what the whole thing I'm about is cleaning DPFs out um, catalysts have not been sort of my game so far but obviously we are moving on to that sort of sort of systems so that's now successful as well now once we're cleaning out the catalyst it's going to clean the particle filter as well so we're going to tell it that's been replaced as well just so the customer doesn't have more issues pretty soon down the line saying he needs his particle filter replaced as long as the pressure is low it's fine so we need to let the engine idle for at least a minute just because it wants to read the, the pressure within the DPF and it'll tell you if it's successful. As long as the pressure is low, it'll tell you it's, it, it is successful. Okay, now we're gonna do reinitialization of the particle, the DNOX false. It's completed. So you can see there's lots of different procedures you need to do, but it's all of this sort of work here is way more important than it is doing the physical cleaning. Just because if you cannot reset these things, it doesn't matter even if you've fitted a brand new Dinox system in this vehicle. The faults will not go away until you can do all of this programming. And uh, it's this is just uh, making making me be able to do the job. If I didn't have this this computer here, this, this scan tool, I would not be able to do the job. Um, so yeah, they are expensive. It's the launch Eurotab 3. Um, they're about six grand, but without this, I couldn't really do my job, so... It is worthwhile buying it. Okay, so that's complete. Start the vehicle up. Now we can see already that the fault lights are gone. So now we've reset that thermal agent there. Let's reset it back to 1020. So the, the values on this obviously decrease as the part gets older. Now the thermal agent of the particle filter is zero. 
Now we are at 3000 RPM. We have around about 40 millibars of pressure in the DPF. Let it idle. We have around about four. Now if you look back in the special functions in here, we go to service action, emissions control. What you can do on these is a regeneration of the Denox system. So I take it that's just similar to burning off the DPF, but instead you are burning off the whatever has built up around the Denox system. Okay, the coolant temperature is needs to be above 80 degrees. Drive the vehicle for one to, yep, for one to two kilometers. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, so the uh, catalyst regeneration didn't really seem to do anything, to be honest. Uh, it asked me to drive two kilometers and then switch the vehicle off and said, uh, that's it, it's done. So I'm not sure what happened there. But now, okay, we have, we have got no more faults in the system. Taking it on a on a drive. Go back in. We'll scan the ECM again. Well, there wasn't. Yeah, sorry. I'm saying there's no more faults. There wasn't any faults to begin with, which is weird. There's just a weird system. That's it. We are all finished.